Today, we get to think about one of my favorite Proverbs in the book of Proverbs. Not the only one, one of them. There are quite a few very clever and just real practical words of wisdom. These nuggets, properly called nuggets because they are pure gold. The strength of an ox. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 4. Listen to these words. Where there are no oxen, the manger is clean. But abundant crops come by the strength of an ox. The logic here is simple and how do you say it? Indisputable. <laughs> it is so plain, plain as day. Look. Okay. We have um in my in my house right now. We found that we have um, a chicken coop. It fits 10 to 13 chickens. Yeah. It is empty. It is clean. But we get no eggs. What are you going to do with an empty chicken coop, right? <laughs> what, you're going to use it for decoration? It's no good for that even. I'm thinking of turning it into a dog house. Look, where there are no oxen, the manger is clean. You have a clean manger, but what you gonna do with the clean manger? What is a manger for if not to house oxen? See, because abundant crops come by the strength of an ox. By having an ox, by employing an ox, a lot, you get a lot of benefit. You, get a, you can um, have an abundant harvest through the strength of an ox. Why all this talk, Pastor Paul, about Cows. Obviously, we're not really talking about cows. We're talking about the strength that it takes to get a job done. Doing the job. Doing the job can be hard. Doing the job can be messy. Doing the job can take a lot of effort, a lot of multiple people's effort. But the results are worthwhile. The harvest is worthwhile. I can't think of a better event that describes this than the cross. The cross took the very blood-filled drops of sweat of the Son of God. It took the slaying of the Son of God. It took the wickedness of wicked men, just like you and me, kneeling him, hands and feet, to the cross, piercing the side letting water flow. There is no greater mess than the work of the cross. It's dirty, it's shameful, but through the wickedness and the dirty mess of the cross, God provided salvation for all of mankind, and that's why we're even able to talk about Jesus right now, because of the messiness of the cross, because of the payment that Jesus made for your sin and mine. Because through it, Jesus came in his spirit and lives inside of our hearts and turned our lives upside down. There's no greater event in all of history that illustrates the point that whereas if Jesus never came, if he stayed enjoying the praises of the angels, there, were, there would never be the scandal of the cross, the messiness, the shame of the cross. But through the messy, shameful cross, much good has come about. Amen. That's you and me. So, I want to echo this, the thought of the Apostle Paul when he says, remember the resurrection? Remember to have eternity in view, and when you do, you know that your labor is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15. All your schoolwork, all your evangelism, all your mission work, all the ridicule, all the killing is not in vain. As God uses the mess and brings about an abundant harvest, remember that your work is not in vain. 
When you do the work of ministry, when you do the work in church, and sometimes you don't see the fruit immediately, it's hard to endure some of the personal conflicts. That's part of probably the hard, probably one of the hardest things. Personal conflict, that conflicts that appear within the church, and you just want to give up and walk away. <laughs> but working doing the hard work of working through the problems getting the relationship to a place that was better that is better than the place it was before it's worth it because the fruits of unity the fruits of love are abundant i want to close with one last illustration a single young man says pastor paul why do i want to get married i don't want to share my money with anybody else I'm thinking, marry your money then, okay? You, you, you marry your money. <laughs> sure, life can be more simple as a single man. And if you have the calling of God on your life as a single man or a single woman, then it can be very fruitful too. But if you don't have that calling, God himself said that to be single is not good. If you don't have that specific calling then you have an opportunity to display, by being married, you have an opportunity to display the beauty of the unity of the triunity in another way that you would not be really inclined or able to do as a single person. You can go throughout life without having to be alone, which God said is not good. You can have children who love the Lord and grow in the Lord, as hard as that is, especially when they don't listen, and especially it's heartbreaking when it seems like they don't believe in Jesus. And yet, this hard work is what God calls us to. And the simple harvest of obedience would be enough, but he also promises the fruit of that obedience too. So have that bigger picture in view. Look, I know you're not a cow. You don't have the strength of an ox. You have a greater strength than the strength of an ox. You have the power of King Jesus. You have the power of his resurrection from the dead. And no matter what depths to which, what depths you have fallen to, you can, by his strength, rise again. Because he has placed the spirit of his resurrection and restoration in your heart. Not to your own strength, but look to his strength. And I want to challenge you today. If you have not done so recently, get back up again. Hear his voice calling you back to himself again. And let this providential placement of his message be a direct call on your life that has been flirting with despair. Get up! By his grace, get up again. And the only way we can do that is as we draw close to him. Let's worship.
Help me know you are here. Help me know you are here. Lord, we have toyed with thoughts of despair and doubt. But we know that being near to you is all that we need and we confess it. Repenting of our weak thoughts of doubt and despair and renew the commitment that you have made to us and for us. We, in response, commit to you and look to you. Raise up my brother and sisters right now, right now, right now, where that person is. The person within the sound of my voice that cannot sense your presence, does not feel you near. Now, be that person's strength right now, I pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen.